And yes, the result was quite surprising. Afterwards, we put it in the show, and he announced, voila, I am the first person to make square soap bubbles. A faire des bulles de savon carré. Quite some time went by. He asked me to come to see him at his home in Cadaqués. I went to Dali's house and rang the bell. The door was very small. It opened, and there was Dali. As he looked at me, his eyes widened. He stared and stared, and bang. He slammed the door shut. I was stunned. What happened? He had called me. He knew I was coming. A bit timidly, I rang the bell again. A little maid opened the door and said, Mr. Dali isn't here. He went out. I said, what do you mean? I saw him three seconds ago. No, Mr. Dali isn't here. He went out. She closed the door. I didn't know what to do. I rang again, very, very loudly. And finally, Dali came back. He opened the door himself, looked at me and said, Last night, I dreamed that a man with blue eyes had come to kill me. Salvador Dali used to say, the only real color is white. Through the power of love, we must kill color and drink the milk of absolute white. Gala, his wife. Every morning, we went fishing in her boat. Yes, fishing. That's what she said. But in fact, we were getting out of the house. Dali liked to be left alone. So we spent the whole day in the boat. It was quite pleasant. Strangely enough, Gala, who had kept her figure, never tanned. Her skin was white as milk. When they saw a side of beef hanging on stage, alongside reproductions of famous statues, being sawed in half and rococo lackeys dropping piles of plates behind the singer who was finishing her aria, disgruntled Italian critics wrote, two foreign upstarts are ridiculing our national art. After the opening, the city of Venice asked Dali to paint a picture for them, and he said yes. But for the inauguration, he wanted to sign the picture in the Fenicia Theater. And he wanted Monsieur Béjar to hold the picture frame. So I agreed to do it. And he took a canvas, like the ones in the back there. He painted some abstract lines on it. Very beautiful. Then he arrived at the theater with his cap and his Catalan shirt. 
and he had two eggs. One was full of gold paint and the other full of black paint. Then he walked to the back of the room. I was holding the painting like that. He ran towards me from the back of the room and when he was four yards away, he threw the egg full of gold paint. It landed on one corner of the picture and looked like a sun, very beautiful. It stood out against the black lines and made a very beautiful picture. Then he started running again and threw the egg full of black paint right in my face. So the mayor of Venice said to me, please, you must never wash your face. You have been painted by Dali. I auditioned for him, and while I was 16 years old, he said, you aren't ready yet, and anyway, there are no openings in the company. And he hired a girl from Argentina. Then he left. All I could think was, I wanted to work with him. I come from a fairly poor family. I asked for some money and bought a boat ticket. I left with one trunk in front and another behind and got to Brussels. There I got lucky. There was a boy who didn't show up, so he took me as a student. That was how I started. I think what is fantastic about Maurice and his company is that sooner or later everyone gets their chance. You have to know how to take it when it comes, and then other things follow. I came from a fairly classical school. When you're 16, you really don't have the same outlook you do at 40. It was the first time I saw men dance, and it was seeing men sweat, real men. Because at the classical school, you always saw the boys standing behind. They were princes or whatever. And there, it was the first time that I really saw men. The ballet master Maurice Béjart says, it takes two to do a choreography. It is very subtle. A dancer and a choreographer are a little like a racehorse and his rider. Of course, it's the horse who jumps over the hurdle, but all by himself, he wouldn't jump. Similarly, the dancer does the dancing, but he wouldn't do it alone. Choreography is an art for two people, like love. Georges Donne, was the performer and collaborator of those productive years, Romeo and Juliet, Mass for Modern Times, Can This Be Death, Nijinsky, The Clown of God, and The Magic Flute were all part of the dream. The generous dancer and the demanding master made a perfect combination. For both of them, their love of work and self-sacrifice were the only way to attain their goal of apparent simplicity and relaxation which in fact required each muscle and tendon to be stretched beyond endurance. But an ardent wind blew the dream away. On November 30th, 1992, the flame went out. Suddenly, a voice rang out. And what about God? One day, a friend of Maurice Béjart told him, 
your attitude towards religion is like Don Juan with women. To which the master replied, my divinity is dance. Subsequently, I deepened my knowledge of India, which I had learned a lot about from my father, and then Japan, where I met a master, and Iran, where I met another master. It gave me the realization that religions are like transparent panels which can cover each other without hiding what is underneath, without conflicting with one another. I realized that there is one truth expressed by different languages. All the traditions I studied, whether they were Taoist, Muslim, animist or Protestant, proclaim the same message. People attach too much importance to the local and social aspects of religion. Try to laugh. But there is another way to conquer time, by a transmission of learning. The adagetto of Mahler, which Bejar had choreographed for his friend Don, was not intended to be danced by anyone else. Don had a friend who was also a disciple of the master. Wanting to move on to other roles, he gave the choreography to Gilles Romand. In dance circles, I'm still an outlaw, and that makes people upset. I can't be categorized, and it bothers them that I've been like that and still am. But it takes considerable effort in order to remain that difficult to categorize. Every basic premise must be continually revisited to the point of becoming nihilistic. He became completely absorbed by his work, for example, if a book didn't contain material that could give him an idea for a new ballet, he wasn't really interested in it. Whatever city he was in, he was mainly interested in finding a rehearsal studio he could get to on foot. 
Everything he saw and heard was a search for new creations. He lived only for and through dance. Wherever the ballet master set foot, dance sprang up around him. In 1980, at the airport of Rio de Janeiro, he was reunited with a dancer who had been in his company for 20 years. Laura Proença had never danced with the master in her native country, Brazil. Now she wanted to do a pas de deux with him there. For a moment, he thought she was joking, and then he smiled. He remembered that in Ionesco's play, The Chairs, the man is 95, and the woman is only 94. Later that evening at the hotel, his impresario gives him a brand new copy of the chairs that he just happened to have in his library. The next day, rehearsals began. The production was a huge success. It's a play I wrote a very long time ago. And I don't remember exactly what I wanted to say. I suppose I wanted to say that the world is an illusion, that it's unreal, that based on a larger reality that we are looking for, that people are looking for. The two old people who are the characters in my play are neither comic nor tragic. They're both. Because they're cut off from their transcendental roots. But they still have the memory of a kind of paradise lost. The impression that the world is an illusion is what dominates. But behind that illusion, as I said, lies another reality. That the world is like a terrible farce. That God was playing with mankind. There is only one thing we can do, and that is to enter God's game and laugh and laugh and laugh at the tragic joke he has played on us. In the great periods of history, theater has always been a combination of the arts. In Greek tragedy, the chorus sings and dances. The actors recite, sing, and evolve. In Japanese theater, Hindu theater, and African theater, the actor simultaneously is a dancer, a singer, and an actor. And until recently, in American musical comedy as well. I think that true theater is always total. Mama? 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 For who is my mama? I have my mama verloren. I bin deine Frau. I bin jetzt deine Mutter. Thank you. 
But I think the actor is total because he expresses himself totally with his whole body, his two legs, torso, chest, arms, and then his voice. The voice is a muscle, and quite often, language completes the action of a ballet, not just to provide an explanation. I think that dance is a total language also, but I think that a shout, a word that explodes, a phrase, adds something essential to the dancer. That is, the knowledge that he has not only two feet, but also his throat, and that throat can express suffering and even solitude. C'est la souffrance et que la gorge, c'est parfois la solitude. La figure de Béjar qui m'a fait l'honneur de vouloir rehausser ma pièce, les chaises, par la danse. Béjar, who did me the honor of adding dance to my play, The Chairs, is a serious thinker. He is a man who has lived and gone through several phases, and I think now that he has reached his maturity, his truth.